Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. On this video, I'm gonna make an apron that I bought from Michaels. Now, it wasn't very expensive. It's showing online right now that it's $7.49 regular price. I would have either bought it when they were half off or I would have used a coupon because I almost never pay full price for anything. Now, for my design, I'm gonna use three colors of heat transfer vinyl. I'm gonna use this really cute pattern from Sparkleberry but you can use anything you want. And then I'm also going to use a cutout or a knockout with white being the outside and black being the letters in it. I worked on this project for a couple of hours today in Cricut Design Space and I just could not get what I really wanted. So today I'm gonna to use Inkscape to make my design. Now, if you don't wanna to try to learn Inkscape, then you can make something similar in Cricut Design Space but I really hope that you'll try Inkscape. It's free, I'll make it really easy, and I won't leave out any steps. So let's turn the camera to the computer and we'll start our design. Before I do though, just a quick plug. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button and then tap the bell and let YouTube know that you wanna be notified anytime I upload a video. This is the starting screen of Inkscape. And Inkscape's a free design software. I have version 1.0. That came out just within the last year, year and a half. And I really, really like it. I used to hate it. Now I love it. I'm going to add text. But before I do, I want to hold the shift button down and hit the plus sign to make my screen larger. The rectangle that you see is just the default template. It's a regular size sheet of paper, I believe. I'm just going to ignore it for today. One of my new goals is to try to eat more healthy. So that's what this apron is gonna be about. So I'll click over on this A, that allows me to add text, and then I'll just click right here. So the first thing I'll do is type the words, eat better. Now that's not the font I want, so I'll go over here to text and font. If that doesn't show up over here, you can also click up here, and then it'll make it open up on the right hand side. I'm gonna use the font blue. Any thick chunky font would work well I believe. So I selected blue and then I'll click apply and my font will change on my screen. Now before I can change the size of my font I have to click on the select tool right here. Then for now I'm going to lock the proportions. I'll change my unit to inches. And I'm going to make it one and a half inches tall. Okay, so that's too wide for my project. So I'll unlock the proportions and I'll change it to eight inches wide. Now before I add any detail to this, I'm going to go ahead and type the next phrase that I want out of the same font. So I'm going to click back over here on the A and I'm going to type the words, not less. Again, I'll select blue, click apply, go to the select tool. It basically makes it where you can do something with that. And then again, lock the proportions and I'll make it one and a half inches tall again. So now all I'm going to do is unlock it and drag it so that it looks like the E's are about the same widths or the T's, any letters that I have in common. Okay, it's still one and a half inches tall. So that looks very, very close. So I'll just leave that alone. Now for the next thing, and this is a new step that I haven't shown in a video before, but I promise you it is not terrible. I'm gonna change my words to a path, super easy. And a path just means it's no longer text. It's now an image. So I'm gonna click on it and click path, object to path. Now comes the fun part. I'm gonna to go to path, path effects. Path effects shows up over here. So I'll click the plus sign and I'm going to select this envelope deformation. Now, what I wanna do is make the top of this rounded. 
So I'm going to say top bend path. And I want to notice where the center of it is. See this arrow here? That's typically the center of your design. And it's in the middle of the left side of the E. So it's important for me to remember that. Otherwise, I have to use a lot of math <laughs> using the ruler up here, and I don't want to do that. So top bend path, and I'm going to click on this edit on canvas. Now remember, this was about the center, so I'm just going to drag it up until it's where I want it. Now notice I could go down and make it look like that, but that's not what I want. I want it to look up. About like that. So let's see how tall it ended up getting. It ended up getting 2.11 inches tall. Now the video that I watched said go ahead and hit go to path and click on object to path again just to make sure nothing changes when you save it. Okay honestly I don't know if that's a necessary step but I'm just doing what he told me to do. So I'm going to repeat this process, click on my text, say text, whoops, I'm sorry, path, object to path, path effects are still here. I'm going to click on plus, select the envelope deformation or deformation. Now before I say I want to bend the bottom path, I need to notice where the center is so it's just left of the L. So I'll say bottom bend path. Grab the middle, and that looks about the same height as the other. Let me select it. The other one was 2.11. This is 2.161. So what I can do is go ahead and lock the proportions, change it to 2.11, and now they're the same heights. Now the last step, if it's necessary, path, object to path. All right, now I want to have these centered over each other, so I'm just going to select both items. Now, here's the difference between Inkscape and Cricut Design Space. In, let me go back here. In Cricut Design Space, if I just touched both, both would be selected, but watch what happens. Neither is selected. So it's important to know you have to have your line all the way around what you want selected. Now, I can either go up here to Object, and then click on Align and Distribute, or I can just go right over here to the right and click on Align and Distribute, and then this will center them on the vertical axis. Okay, so now the Not Less is centered perfectly under Eat Better. They're both selected, so I think I'll go to Object and Group. And let's go ahead and change them this really pretty kind of purple color. That's going to represent my sparkleberry pattern. Now in the middle, I want this little banner type thing with some words in it. So I'm going to go up here to File, Import, and I'm just going to import an image that I found online. It said it was a free image, and I named it Banner 1. So I'll say Open, then I'm just going to click OK. And all I did was drag it from the internet to my desktop. I haven't done anything else with it yet. The proportions are locked, so for now I'm just going to drag it larger with it still selected. I'm going to go to Path, Trace Bitmap. I don't change anything here on very simple things. Click OK. It showed up, so I know it traced, so I can click out of that. Now there's two layers here. There's the new layer and the old layer. I think this is the old layer. The way you can tell, and that's the one that's selected right now. You're going to click on this right here. This shows any nodes in a path. Okay, that's not the path, so I can just delete it. So select tool, it's still selected, hit delete. Now if I click on this one and I click on this edit paths by notes, which I'm not going to do, I'm not going to edit anything, I just want to see if this is now a path, and it is. So get back to the select tool. My proportions are locked, so I'm just going to drag this to about the size I want it. I think to add visual interest it should be larger than the widest part of my words. So that looks pretty good right there. 
Now, I always just like to keep centering things as I go. I think it just keeps me on track better. So I've selected everything, align the distribute, then I'll center it again, and I'm ready to move on. Actually, not quite ready to move on. I think I want this a little bigger. And then I'll unlock it and make it a little taller. Okay, so I know I'm being redundant, but I'll select everything and center it again. Now I'll go ahead and move it down. Now the words that I want inside this banner are, and make it with love. So I'll select on text again, click over here somewhere, and I'll type and with love. So let's click on text and font. That is homework. Homework is really pretty, but Amelia is chunkier. And Amelia is also a script font. So I'm going to click on Amelia. And the new view shows up here. It hasn't changed here yet, but you can see what it's going to look like. Since I like it, I'm going to click Apply, and it changes it over here. Now I'm going to need to have these a different color so I can see them. So for now, I'm just going to change them a bright pink. Select them, move them down. I'm going to go ahead and lock the proportions for now. I'll probably change that in a minute, but for now I just want to see what it would look like if the proportions are locked. And that's pretty good, but I want it just a little taller. So I'll unlock and drag it taller. And I'll move it down to where I think it's about in the center. Now if you wanted to be done here, this was pretty simple. You would just hit File, Save As. We're going to call this, I think this is Apron 4 by now. Apron 4. And then down here I want to change it so that it saves as a plain SVG. And it's going to save to my desktop. But I want to go one step farther. So I'm going to take this off of my black. And I'm going to hit Command C, Command V. So I'm copying and pasting it. I don't think I can make an offset yet. Let's go look. Path, linked offset. No, I can't. So here's the steps you have to take. And I can't really explain why. They're super simple though. So you just have to do them. You're going to click on Object, Ungroup. Then you're going to go Path, Union. Now, if I go to Path, Linked Offset, I just grab this little bar here, or this grab handle. Now, I don't want it to snap. When it's snapping, it just jumps all over the place. So I'm going to click on this till it goes white. Now I can drag this rather smoothly. And I want it to be pretty big, and I'll show you why. Now, that's two layers. I have my original layer that I used, and then I have my offset layer. So I'm going to drag my offset layer up here. Now, I've got to figure out how to bring that forward. Okay, object. You can see the words are what's highlighted, because the dots aren't all the way around the banner. So I'm going to raise that to top. Looks terrible right now, doesn't it? Okay, let's lower it just a little bit. Now we're going to select the banner and my big offset. Click on Path and Difference. This is like Slice and Cricut Design Space. Then I can take my original letters back and put them right there. Now I just saved this in case I made some mistake. Now that I don't need it, I'll just delete it. So my plan was to use Sparkleberry for the words up here and down here, black for the banner, and then something sparkly for the words. 
And then I changed my mind and I decided I'd go simple. So the banner's gonna be white. You can't see white though, so I'll click on gray. And then the words are going to be black. Now, it doesn't look great on here, but you don't have the pink apron behind it and you don't have the pattern of the Sparkleberry HTV. Now, I wanna make sure I grouped my words. Okay, I did. So now I'm ready to go ahead and resave this. I'm saving it as Apron 4 SVG, and then I can close out. Okay, now that we're in Cricut Design Space, I'm going to click on Upload, Upload Image. We're looking for Apron 4, so I hit Browse, Apron 4, and Open. Now, it's already done. There's nothing to erase, so I'll just say Save. Now that it's in my Cricut Images, I'll click on it and I'll say insert image. Now one thing about making images in Inkscape and bringing them into Cricut Design Space is they don't come in at the right size. They come in at the right proportions but not the right size. So I'm just gonna drag it to the right size. I wanted the top part of my image to be about eight inches. So if I put it on the two inch line and I drag it till it's at the 10 inch line, then this is about eight inches wide, and that's exactly what I want. So I'm gonna click on Make It. Before I go any further, I'm gonna mirror all three layers. Most HTVs have to be mirrored. While I'm on the Sparkleberry Pattern layer, I'm gonna go ahead and click Continue. Select Everyday Iron On, and that's what I'll use for all three of my layers and I'm ready to turn the camera around. I'll fast forward through the cutting and then we'll pick up the tutorial when we're ready to put it together. Now, before I fast forward through the cutting, I did want to let you know when I read the instructions for the Sparkleberry paper, this is one of the HTVs that you actually don't mirror. You cut it with the pretty side up. If you're new to Cricut or using heat transfer vinyl, now what I'm gonna do is weed away all the excess. And with the white layer, remember this was a banner and then I had cut out of it an offset of one of my phrases. So whereas you're usually leaving your words, in this case, I'm weeding my words out. And I don't really want these tiny little white pieces in there. So I'll go ahead and take those out as well. Now in this case, this is the phrase that I want to put in this offset. So in this case, I'll actually leave the letters and weed everything around the letters. So now I just need to go back in and take out my centers. Now here's the layer I'm worried about because I've never used this Sparkleberry before. And in looking online, it said I'm supposed to have some type of masking paper to put over it. And I don't know how easy this is to weed since it's my first time to use it. Okay, well fortunately, there was a piece of masking paper in with the Sparkleberry vinyl. Okay, so it says I'm supposed to remove the liner from the clear mask. And I think this is reusable, so I probably shouldn't have cut it down, but too late now. I'll go ahead and squeegee it down to get it to really stick to the masking paper or the transfer paper. Now let's see how easily this comes up. I'm 
not so easily. Okay. Oh, that is not good. Okay, Sparkleberry, so far, you are not my friend. Okay, so I changed my game plan because I was having a horrible time with that Sparkleberry. And I'm usually a problem solver, but I had had enough. So I pulled out some old Cricut patterned HTV that I had, and I think this will be gorgeous. It doesn't have as much contrast as I wanted, but I do think it'll be really nice. Now, the issue with mixing vinyls is they require different lengths of time of heat, different temperatures, some are hot cold, some are cold peel. I'm sorry, some are hot peel, some are cold peel. The online interactive guide shows that I should preheat for five seconds. Then I should press this at 340 degrees for 50 seconds. Then you're supposed to flip it and do 15 seconds longer. So, okay, I think that looks good. I'm going to go with that and then I'll put on a nice, crisp, clean Teflon sheet. And I forgot to preheat but it'll be okay. Now it did say to apply some firm pressure. Now I'm supposed to flip it and press for 15 more seconds. And now the tough part. We have to wait for it to cool off. Okay, that's pretty close to room temperature. Let's see if it'll come off. Cute, cute, cute. Then I have my banner, which I would consider the knockout layer or the offset layer. Now I'm supposed to press this for 10 to 15 seconds at 300 degrees. Hopefully that doesn't do anything bad to my patterned vinyl. Well, that's good. The pattern vinyl doesn't look burnt. So once again, we just have to wait for it to cool down. Now, my last layer is supposed to be heated 10 to 15 seconds in 305. I'm going to try to go for 8 seconds, pull the backing off, and then repress, just because sometimes this backing can make impressions in the vinyl that it's on top of. So I'm going to try to press that out. First of all, try to avoid it as much as possible, and then press it out. This one's a hot or cold peel, so as long as it doesn't start pulling up the vinyl under it, I'll go ahead and pull it up when it's warm. And then I do see a slight impression. So I'm going to do my last pressing for about 10 more seconds.
Okay, that makes me happy because those impressions came out with that less pressing. Now, since I didn't have the contrast of the original HTV, if I wanted to, I could cut out an outline around these letters, design an inkscape, and add some black around it. That might tie it in better together, but I think it looks pretty cute. Thanks for sticking around till the end. Until the next video, bye-bye.